has a um, high predictive value, relatively speaking, and high impact, which is traditional genetic testing. If I'm being found out to be a carrier for Huntington's disease or a BRCA, that will be highly actionable for me. And Huntington's not, not in terms of treatments, because there's none, but in terms of life decisions that I make. And I think we would all agree in this room that this really needs regulation. And by regulation, I mean statutory regulation, oversight, monitoring, not, not necessarily only soft regulation. Um, there's also information that is, that, that is likely to have a low predictive value and high impact. And um, Katie Featherstone and colleagues wrote a very interesting book where they also showed that a lot of, a lot of the concepts of inheritance and whether one person will inherit a particular disease from the parent rather than the other is due to family resemblance. So those typical family stories, um, uncle such and such has this problem and because you look like him, you're more likely to get it than your sister. So this is, in terms of predictive value, relatively low, but people act, sometimes act upon this information in the sense that they base life information on that. Um, so our suggestion would be to have a flexible scheme that can be reassessed from time to time and that would do away with these clearly clear-cut categories such as medical, health-related or not medical device regulation. We believe is also not the best way to regulate pr the personal genomics market. So in, now coming to the last slide, um, and, and returning to Hank's uh, list of nine, of nine um, 